one of the trainers that I follow had a really good video today. It was about a specific topic and she did bring up a really good point in that video. And I left a comment on there and I wanted to share that comment and my thoughts on it. Because the point that she did allude to is that sometimes when there is an emergency, we may have to revert to something that is aversive. And I gotta tell you that one of the biggest clapbacks I get from people when I tell them that I don't use force with my horses, that I don't hit them, I get is, yeah, but what are you gonna do if? What are you gonna do if your horse backs you into a corner and tries to beat the ever-loving snot out of you? Obviously, if that happens, we have a much bigger problem that I hadn't addressed up to that point. Or what if your horse is like really badly injured and can't consent to the treatment and is fighting you? Then what are you gonna do? I, I get that all the time. As if some reason, the fact that there could be a life-threatening emergency or something that is really dangerous and has to be dealt with right now. It's justification not to train the animal without all these aversives. Emergency maneuvers aren't training. And I think sometimes that gets lost. Like, yeah, if there is an emergency, then you do what you gotta do. And it's not unethical to have to do that. But if having to use that method or that tool or that aversiveness every time you work with the animal when it's not an emergency it means there's a training issue there's a gap in the training and taking the time to help that animal like for instance escudo he would absolutely not take a syringe when he got injured and had to have his med meds in him we had to do what we had to do and get two people and force it in him because he had a bad infection and didn't have time to train him but you better believe that as soon as the emergency was over we worked every single day on getting him to take a syringe willingly. I mean, it's at the point now that if I go to give another animal a syringe, he gets all upset and tries to follow me because he wants the syringe. And before anyone jumps all over me as to why he wasn't already trained, he'd only been here four weeks and I was just learning what he could do and couldn't do. But the fact that we sometimes have to do that should not become a crutch to not work and train our animals when there is no emergency and to work on reducing and eliminating the need for those things. Like if I have to lead a horse that I don't know near a really busy road and him or somebody could get hurt if he got loose and someone that knows him says he respects a stud chain and this is a one-off thing, we all need to stay safe. Yeah, yeah, I have no problem using it. But if I had to work around my farm with my own horses and put a stud chain on them, I would know there's, I, I need to do some training. Obviously I don't use one. And so the comment I left and how I like to think of it is if you're driving down the street and you were about to have a head-on collision because someone's coming at you, you might have to make the call to drive your car into a ditch. People are still gonna get hurt, there's still gonna be damage, there's still things you're going to need to repair. But in that moment, it was what you needed to do to save people's lives, even if you had to do some repair afterwards. However, saying that there's ditches on the side of the road, <laughs> so you don't need to learn how to actually drive and avoid accidents, is kind of ridiculous. It's kind of the same thing.